In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating to you my 3D to AI workflow on how I make isometric rooms using simple shapes and exporting them to Stable Diffusion so I can make a really good render. So without any further delay, let's jump straight into it. So in Blender, I'm going to add a cube and remove its faces to make a cutout isometric room, add in a plane and place it underneath it. I'm going to use a material cap instead of adding a material to each individual element that I'm going to have in this scene. And basically what I'm going to be doing here, I'm just going to add cubes, uh, as you see here. And whenever I want to add any detail, I can just add in some loop cuts, insert some faces, duplicate, and uh, extrude some faces inwards, etc. I'm not going to be adding any, uh, any complex topology, nor am I going to be retopologizing any areas. I won't be even adding any materials uh, to what you see here. This, the gray. Uh, material mat cap that I added to my scene is enough uh, for this workflow and whenever needed I'm going to shade smooth the elements that I add and look at how I made this pillow it's basically a duplication of the bit itself and I just scaled it down now I'm going to add some frames to the wall and I wonder what it's going to be interpreted as by uh, the stable diffusion uh, web UI that I'm going to use after I'm finished using this one right here and if you want to even shorten the amount of time that you spend within blender if you're not uh, efficient within blender or not confident enough with your uh, 3d model and you can just uh, use sketchfab sketchfab is fantastic if you want to prototype a scene really quickly and don't worry about it not being original because by the time you end with the method that I'm going to be showing you here, uh, whatever, that it, whatever it is that you made is going to look entirely different. This is why I'm comfortable having such primitive shapes and I'm not worried about how bad this looks. I mean, this is terrible, just a shelf, a desk and a bed. I'm going to take a screenshot of it. I'm not even going to render it. And now in Stable Diffusion, I'm going to use Dream Shaper version 6. And I've already got some good results here with just prompts, but I'm going to show you how to control it even further with ControlNet, which is a free extension that I'm going to leave in the description down below. I'm going to use the depth model, the can model, and the MLSD model. And the purpose of these are to get the shape of the render that I just made. Here I'm activating uh, the ControlNet models. And I'm going to lower the threshold for the MLSD, and for the depth I'm going to higher up uh, the weight, the control weight, uh, so that the depth of my scene can be translated into a new render here. And as for the prompt, it's going to be an iterative process. What's needed basically is for you to have the medium in which you want the image to be in, uh, the resolution, the art style, and make sure you have a box cutout isometric room within the prompt. And you can expect to get some fantastic results from this, from simple prompting and the use of control net. Uh, these are some of the results that I got uh, using this method and as you can see the grid is part of the generation uh, that's because I didn't render it out I just took a screenshot I just took the lazy way if had I had I added any details to the bed or to the shelf to the disk uh, this would have been a way better render and if that's why I said you should probably use sketchfab if you're not really good at 3d modeling or if you are good at 3d modeling just uh, give some time and love into the 3D models that you're going to put within your scene. It's going to make a huge difference. As for me, I just wanted to do this for uh, demonstration purposes. I didn't want to waste any time showing you how to model a disk or a bed. This is not the point of this video. It's the 3D to AI workflow. Uh, how simply I can add in uh, some simple renders or pre-renders and give them materials, basically lighting and materials and rendering and post-processing basically within all within stable diffusion and the more control you want over your generation uh, the less your prompt is going to matter because it's going to adhere to whatever you input within control net so you're gonna have to bear that in mind there is actually a tab underneath each control net that you have each control net model whether you want your prompt to be more important or the control net model itself to be more important in each individual case in this case I had uh, my prompt be as important, balanced, and these are the results that I got. And now I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to use and the image to image tab. Basically, 
here is probably maybe you've had a render that you're satisfied with and you want to transform it to something else. Repeat the same process that I did, but within the image to image tab. Here you basically put what in one of the images that you made previously or an image that you like, you found online, but you referenced the artist, the main artist behind it and put in a control net model, just like the one that I used before, whether it's your own or again, something that you found online you want to experiment with. And these are the results that you can get. Of course, this is something that I've made previously. I just made variations of it. So that's how you can use the image to image tab to make variations of your own generations. This is really interesting, honestly. Um, all of this just within a few clicks. So this was it for today's video. Bear in mind that this is still very experimental and I'm still using Stable Diffusion 1.5. This is going to be way better when Stable Diffusion Excel comes out. Until then, see you in the next one.